Mule is one of those classic strategy games that comes up in retro gaming discussions time and time again. In fact, it's so well loved that it was in Computer Gaming World's list of top games for years after its release. I don't usually judge games on their popularity, but this one is special. However, if you want to play Mule, you need either an Atari or a Commodore. However, there is another option. That's right, Mule was released back in the day on the NES. How does this stack up to the home computer original? Well, let's find out. In Mule, you and three other people are selected to colonize a planet. In short, you do this by selecting plots of land, building on them, and harvesting or mining different resources. This is achieved with the help of a robot called a Mule. So this is basically a board game about economics, a subject which, let's face it, isn't that exciting. However, it's done with Ozark Softscape's trademark light-hearted attitude. And the game that results is ingenious. So to start, you pick one to four players. Uh, I believe you need a multi-tap for four players, and then you select your mode. Uh, don't select beginner even if you are a beginner because it's excruciatingly slow. Then of course you get to select a color, and did I say people, four people on the planet? It's actually four aliens, and you can choose from these different species and they have different attributes. It says here that the Legite has its head in the clouds. Well, you know, that sounds like me, so I'm going to pick that guy. Welcome, green Legite. So once you've done that, what the game does next is drop you off on the planet Irata. Uh, that's Atari spelled backwards, in case you're wondering. And it starts you off, like any good board game, with a allotment of money and goods and land. The game lasts 12 turns, it takes roughly an hour to play a game of Mule. Every turn has the same sequence of phases. So the first phase is you select a plot of land. Every turn, all four players get a, uh, an extra plot until the whole field is filled up. Green, and before long, it's my turn. So let's see how a turn of Mule plays out. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is buy a Mule. They start off costing a hundred bucks, but the price can fluctuate depending on how many minerals are being mined by other players. However, I'm going to outfit mine for food production because you know what? The colony needs food, right? Then what you do is you stick your mule on your plot of land and install it. When you're done with your turn, you can go to the pub and win money gambling. I believe the amount of money you get is somehow based on how much time you have remaining for your turn. And of course, at the beginning of everybody's turn is some kind of a random event. Over here you see that the next player's meal went crazy and ran off. Then it's time for the auction where you buy or sell energy, food, or minerals. And in a way, this part is really the meat of the game. You know, it's where you get rich or die trying. You can do things here like screw over other players by refusing to sell them food or energy that they need, which effectively sabotages their next turn. However, you have to strike a balance because if the colony doesn't get to a certain level by the end of the game, you actually fail and everybody loses. One thing you might have noticed while watching this is a distinct lack of sound. In fact, the NES version has way less audio than any of the other versions. Let's watch a clip from the Commodore version to compare. As you'll notice, almost everything in the Commodore version has a sound effect attached. You can hear the ticking of the auction clock, the auction bell, the sound effect of footsteps. There's even sound effects when mining and stuff is going on. It might not seem like much, but it's a big improvement over the nearly dead silent NES version. All the NES one adds are these digitized sound effects that sound kind of like they're from a uh, 1985 Macintosh game or something. Okay, well, let's get back to the gameplay. What you're looking at here is a energy auction where the general store is selling them for 45 bucks a unit. 
the player at the top has a surplus, and so they're going to try to undercut the general store. The seller adjusts the uh, price that they're setting by marching down the screen. The buyer adjusts how much they're willing to pay by marching up the screen, and they meet in the middle and they kind of lock together. And, you know, when you're done selling, you can push up on the joystick and retreat. If you're done buying, you can push down on the joystick and retreat. I think it's a really clever and fun way to portray what goes on in, you know, haggling and auctions and that kind of thing. It's the kind of thing that Ozark Softscape does best. You know, they take a subject that's potentially kind of boring and very complicated and they boil it down to its essentials. You know, where most developers would have the user digging through layers of boring text menus to uh, do these actions. Ozark approaches it more like a console game, even on the home computer versions. I'd previously reviewed their game Seven Cities of Gold, which takes a similar approach to uh, the Conquistadors. Okay, well, let's talk about the strategy for a second. Mule, under its simple interface, has a lot of economic complexity to it. For example, you can increase production by specializing in, say, food or specializing in energy, and you get a additional boost by placing... Uh, plots that are doing energy or mining or whatever next to each other, at least to a point, because there's also a law of diminishing returns. Add to that that some plots are better than others at energy or food or whatever, uh, sometimes depending on the terrain and sometimes just depending on the plot itself. And as you go through the game, you're also going to want to re-outfit your mules. You can actually take them off your plot and re-outfit them for a different purpose. So, for example, let's say that there's constant energy shortages. Well, you can take one of your mules and re-outfit that for energy and sell that to the colony. Or maybe you just want to be self-reliant so other players can't gouge you. So there's a lot of complexity beneath mule's simple surface. And to me, that's a triumph in terms of game design. And it's something that Electronic Arts didn't really get when they requested that Danny Bunton put, quote, guns and bombs into her game for release on the Sega Genesis. Now, that version was scrapped, and I'm glad that Bunton said no, because that just would have been stupid. Okay, now check this out. In this game, I've cornered the market on food. And if each player doesn't have at least two units of food, the time that they have to move next turn is diminished. And because the colony has a food shortage, because I'm the only person producing food, uh, the general store is also out of food. So I really have the upper hand here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge them a boatload for food. And if they can't meet my crazy prices, well, that's just uh, too bad. No food for you. As you can see, the other two players have pretty much kind of given up and aren't going to pay my uh, ransom. Uh, but the blue one, uh, you know, he's going to go all the way up to 200 bucks when it hits 200. Uh, yeah, I'll decide to sell him some food. But of course, if you play it aggressively like this and you starve out the other players, uh, the whole colony can fail. And that's the, um, that's the bad ending of Mule. And that's what happened in this game. You know, I got to the end of the game and I didn't win anyway because I was sitting there growing food when the other players had switched all their production to mining smith ore, which becomes increasingly valuable as you near the end of the game. So there really is a ton of complexity to Mule. As a multiplayer game that you can invite a few friends over to play, I highly recommend Mule. There's nothing else really quite like it. Now, the NES version, um, it's pretty good. I find the lack of sound fairly off-putting, but if you can get past that, there's plenty good about Mule on the NES, and it's much cheaper than the Atari or Commodore editions. Okay, well, be sure to subscribe for more game reviews, and I'll catch you next time.